The Bills made the playoffs last year for the first time since 1999. No team had gone longer without making the playoffs. They got off the schneid. They got in. Now, can they do it back-to-back seasons? Or is this maybe a step-back season in the hopes that down the road there's more sustained excellence, we'll call it. To talk about it, we'll, uh, we're joined now by Joe Biscal, who covers the Bills in western New York. How are you doing this morning, Joe? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. Bills will open up uh, against the Ravens on uh, Sunday, and they're one of not a lot of respect, despite the fact that the Bills have made the playoffs. They're going to Baltimore, and they're a seven-and-a-half-point underdog for their uh, season opener. So as you assess this Bills team as you look at them, are they as good a team as the team they ended last year with? Uh, No, they are not. And they took legitimate steps back, specifically on the offensive side of the ball, which is probably why you're going to see them be underdogs quite a bit throughout the 2018 season. And uh, Tyrod Taylor, take him for what he is. He's an he's an average to maybe slightly below average starting quarterback in the league, but he was good enough to get them going. And and he he did enough to where he didn't make too many mistakes to where it didn't put them in a bad light. And, and the Bills used that kind of quarterback play in addition to having some random acts in in a football season such as turnovers and interceptions mind you um, they helped ca- use those to catapult them into a playoff position last year and and they did a good job with it but this year I think the offense is going to hold them back a bit even though they upgraded out as an offensive coordinator going from Rick Dennison to Brian Dable who was last year with uh, the University of Alabama and the New England Patriots the years before that as their tight ends coach. Um, And even though they spent a top 10 pick on a quarterback who will not be in the starting lineup to begin the season, mind you, I still think what they have on offense or what they don't have on offense, specifically there on the offensive line, I think we're setting up for maybe a, a, a little bit of a worse season this year. When do you think Josh Allen will arrive as the starting quarterback in Buffalo? Well, if these first four games are as hard as advertised for the Bills, it might not be much past mid-October because they've got the Ravens on the road, and they have a fairly good defense. Then they've got the L.A. Chargers at home, and we know what happened with Peterman last year with the L.A. Chargers, but still, even though it won't probably won't be as bad as it was last year, they still have a ridiculously good defense. Then the next two weeks, they've got the Minnesota Vikings on the road, who have a tremendous defense, and the Green Bay Packers on the road, which even if they don't have as good of a defense, their offense is just going to take them, take them into top flight. And so that's, that's a pretty tough four games to start the season. So if, if they start the year 0-4 or even 1-3, and it might get to a spot where the, the Bills fans get to – and get to the, the the spot in their mind where they're like, well, look, why isn't the rookie out there? If this is going to be a lost season, then get him maximum reps. And eventually I think the Bills will get there. So I think that, that mid-October range is probably where I'm pegging this thing because I don't think it's a matter of him not getting in. I don't think it's a Paxton Lynch versus Trevor Simeon-style battle here. Josh Allen has ability, and it's especially notable that the Bills, uh, the Bills decision-makers – Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean both left the door open. Um, Brandon Bean said before the final cuts game came down that Josh Allen has done enough to warrant the opportunity to start. And, and then Sean McDermott said, Josh is on schedule. So these are both indicating statements to say, hey, Josh Allen's going to get in at some point in 2018. Speak with Joe Biscali. He covers the Buffalo Bills for WKB. Uh, w uh, on Josh Allen, I got a chance, uh, and he came in with the reputation going into the draft as the guy with maybe the quarterback with the best arm. Uh, and then I watched a bit of that. Well, it was a bit of a debacle the game against the Bengals, the exhibition game. But I saw a couple of times when he was rifling balls toward receivers, and it's like, wow. I mean, it, it does <laughs> it does stand out. His arm, you get a chance to see it in person. Is it as impressive in person? And are the reports that his biggest issue, which is accuracy? Did you see some of those issues in training camp? Well, uh, to answer your first question, best live arm I've seen in person, and no hyperbole there. That's and that's going back ten years covering this team, which nah, I guess might not be saying much with, with the Bills quarterback, <laughs> but 
But, uh, no, Josh Allen does have the best live arm I've seen, and particularly with the quarterbacks that, uh, that we've seen come through here, even in, in games or even going to road games. Yeah, he's, he's, got a, he's got a top three arm probably right now. But uh, then again, it's what you do with it. And what they've been really harping on with him is trying to get his lower half mechanics to match with the upper half because a lot of times what you saw in college is he would sacrifice uh, his, his footwork because he had such a good arm and he was used to being able to make any single throw he wanted to in the lower levels of competition that, uh, that he used to play in. And that led to him opening up his hip on throws to the left or not setting his feet on throws where he had the, the time to set his feet. I mean, these are all things that they have to correct over time. They've done a good job so far in the spring and summer, and it seems like that's not as big of an issue, and it seems like he's throwing in a lot more rhythm. But they need to continue to hammer at that because it's not a matter of, oh, hey, you're doing it in practice in a couple of preseason games. You're fixed. It's <laughs> repetition, muscle memory, everything along those lines, and they that's what they're going to doing be doing behind the scenes until he sees the light of day. So the accuracy, it has the potential to improve. And going back to Wyoming, I, I went back and charted every single one of his games. There was a lot of drops, um, a lot of plays where his offensive line let him down as well. I mean, his teammates around him were just not good from one year to the next. And that's not an excuse because a good quarterback can over, overcome those things. But that combined with the uh, with some feet work, footwork uh, issues that led to the the completion percentage problems that you saw. But I do think he has potential for getting better in that area. Lashawn McCoy, of course, has some off field stuff going on right now. Um, he spoke a little bit uh, on Wednesday for the first time since he's being sued by his ex girlfriend in connection with a home invasion. I guess his ex-girlfriend was was beaten and robbed of jewelry in that. What are you expecting out of LaShawn McCoy this season, given that he's got that hanging over his head? Well, he and the Bills are both operating as though he's in the clear, at least for right now. And that's that they're only taking it the one-step-at-a-time approach. And I don't think particularly the fact that the Bills have – a female co-owner, I don't think they take things like that lightly. And for them to come out in support of him and have him be out there right from the start of training camp all the way through to the season and presumably all the way through the end of the 2018 season, that probably is a pretty strong statement about what they believe is is true or not true or if they trust what McCoy is telling them and everything along those lines. So I think the Bills are just going about this saying, yeah, the, McCoy's going to be here for 2018, and uh, we expect him to be a big part of the offense. And uh, he needs to be a big part of the offense. If they want to do much of anything offensively, it's got to go through him and maybe his backups too, but he's, he's taking the lion's share. I mean, the offensive line play is going to be a legitimate downgrade from last year. The wide receivers – or it leaves some to be desired. Obviously, there's a downgrade in quarterback from last year to this year with the potential that maybe it gets a little bit better as the year goes along. But at the early stages, it's going to be all McCoy and um, what he does with it. And at the age of 30, mind you, um, will be definitely uh, intriguing to track. Talking to Joe Biscaglia with uh, Channel 7, Eyewitness News, covers the covers the Bills. What would you say, we, we spent a lot of time talking about the things that aren't very good with this year's Bills team. What will be the strength of this team, do you think? Uh, the strength of the team will be the, the defense and in specific areas. They have the potential to have like a top 12 to 15 unit, but they also have a lot of youth that needs to come through. And they have a lot of unknowns that they hope to get solved as the season kind of gets going here. They had a big issue along the defensive line last year. They weren't able to get a pass rush and they weren't able to stop the run, which is a pretty terrible combination if you think about it um and they went out they signed a defensive tackle for a big money contract they drafted a player in the third round that's going to work in heavily into the rotation at defensive tackle at defensive end they went out and signed a big money free agent in in trent murphy that will start for them and they still have 
the similar depth. They have more depth there, too. So they're hoping that helps them grow as a defense in totality and help out their young linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds, who is the 16th overall pick, and then Matt Milano, who is in his second year um, and showed some real flashes last year. I mean, those two are probably going to go through some growing pains, even just working together, but uh, having that potential there is a good thing. And then the secondary is the real strength because you've got a pair of safeties in Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer who re- who combined for eight interceptions last year. They're instinctive. Uh, they're former baseball players, so they, they can track a ball really well, which is a facet of that position that Sean McDermott really likes. Tredavious White is a good player, uh, but another big area of concern is the other cornerback spot. So they do have potential for a solid defense this year. It's just a matter of those pieces coming together and working at, in unison. Just back to the quarterbacking position, um, is Nathan Peterman, is there a chance he'll be any good? And uh, if you go back to your you know, start of the training camp, or, uh, are you maybe a little surprised that it's not the departed A.J. McCarron that's got the holding down the number one job as a placeholder? No, I'm not surprised that uh, A.J. McCarron uh, is is gone from the Bills because even going back to spring, it was pretty clear that Nathan Peterman was the better quarterback of between him and A.J. McCarron. And it, I mean, any time you ask Sean McDermott about Nathan Peterman, it's almost as though he gets like a twinkle in his eye. I mean, he loves the guy, and he wants to reward the guy for a, for a good offseason of work a good spring and summer uh, and, and him really coming coming through and showing a good command of the offense. So I think there is a chance that Nathan Peterman is going to defy some expectations out there because, quite frankly, I don't know that the expectations are all that high for Nathan Peterman from a national perspective based on what everybody saw in, in Los Angeles, that five-interception first half. And that's going to be tough to shake for a lot of people with, his, with their opinions of him. But... What I'll say to that is almost right after that game, in the snow game against the Indianapolis Colts, Nathan Peterman actually started that game, and he he threw a touchdown pass to Kelvin Benjamin in those conditions. He actually looked really good in that game. And so I wonder if if he's going to play far above national expectations. However, he still struggles in some key areas that you need an actual NFL starting quarterback to be good in and that's throwing an out route to the sideline. He just doesn't have enough zip on the ball. Um, and so if he can avoid those throws and, and avoid those mistakes and throw in rhythm over the middle, like like as is his best uh, throw in his arsenal, then I think he could be solid. I don't think he'll be spectacular, but I think he could be an average NFL starter. Final question for you, uh, Joe. As as you've outlined, you think the team probably takes a step back this year in, in the hopes that the long-term future is much brighter. Bill's Mafia always keeps us entertained. Uh, the various <laughs> shenanigans by the fans before home games. We've been tweeting out pictures this morning of the guy doing the backflip onto the folding table, which collapsed the person on fire at one point. Um, what uh, is there anything that can uh, that that you've uh, that you've heard of that may happen this off season that or this season that may uh, top what you've seen so far? Uh, no, I, there's nothing I've heard of that could potentially top all those things. I, okay, I just hope everyone stays safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the question, um, for, right? <laughs> more more than anything, uh, because I do know in those lots it, it tends to get a little bit rowdy. Um, you forgot to mention the slap fight from from like two or three years ago, and and the uh, the dizzy bat slam into the RV. That I mean, these these are all things that uh, are gifed and will be remembered forever. I got to find uh, that. Bill's so family. so a guy did a dizzy bat and then ran right into the side of an RV. Oh yeah. Okay. Spectacular. Got, we have to find that <laughs> spectacular. Okay, we have to find that one now. That's that's great. Uh, Joe, always appreciate catching up with you and talking Buffalo Bills football. Thanks a lot for the time uh, and enjoy the games uh, this weekend and uh, this year. Sounds great, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank Thanks. you very much, Joe.